Welcome to this video on solving algebraic inequalities. Let's begin. Solving algebraic inequalities is identical to solving algebraic equations with two additional rules. The first rule is that when multiplying or dividing by a negative number, we must reverse the orientation of the inequality sign. The second rule is that if the variable ends up on the right-hand side of the inequality, we must rewrite the inequality so that the variable is on the left-hand side of the inequality sign. Let's explore these extra rules further. So remember, the first rule is when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to flip the orientation of the inequality sign. That means if we have less than, we have to rewrite it as greater than. If we start with greater than, it becomes less than. If we start with less than or equal to, it becomes greater than or equal to. And if we start with greater than or equal to, it becomes less than or equal to. So let's do some examples over here. So one example is negative 5x is greater than 10. To solve this, just as I would an equation, I have to divide both sides by negative 10. Well, negative 5x divided by negative 5 is simply x. 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. However, please note that I just divided by a negative sign. Since I just divided by a negative number, I have activated this extra rule. So this greater than sign that I started out with has to transform. It has to become a less than sign. So my final answer is not x is greater than negative 2, but rather x is less than negative 2. Again, please note this also applies to division as well as multiplication. So again, multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So let's look at this next example. This is actually a counterexample. So here we have 5x is greater than or equal to negative 10. Here, notice I'm dividing both sides by 5. Hmm. Well, is 5 a negative number? It's not. 5 is a positive number. So 5x divided by 5 is just x, or 1x. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Because I divided by 5 and not negative 5, this inequality sign does not change. Now, sometimes people get confused because they see a negative sign here. So it's true that there is a negative sign in this inequality. However, we are not dividing by a negative number. We are dividing by positive 5. Again, that means that the inequality sign does not change. Let's look at the next rule. The next rule addresses what happens if the variable ends up on the right-hand side of the inequality. So remember, if I said in an equation x equals 2 or 2 equals x, those are the same thing. They mean exactly the same thing. However, if I say 2 is less than x, or if I say x is less than 2, these are actually not the same, but opposite. For example, if I said I am older than you, or if I said you are older than me, those don't mean the same thing. In fact, they have opposite meanings. We can't both be older than each other. If I'm older than you, that means you're younger than me. If you're older than me, that means I'm younger than you. So since these have opposite meanings, we have to um, switch them. We have to be very careful with our inequality signs. So let's go ahead and jump into this example and see what happens. So we have 22 is greater than 2x. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. This gives me 11 is greater than x. So if 11 is greater than x, that means by definition that x is less than 11. Okay. So again, we have to rewrite this so that everything is flipped. What if I had to apply both rules in the same example? So here I have 22 is greater than negative 2x. First, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So we have negative 11 on one side and x on the other side. Then we have to decide um, whether this greater than sign is going to stay the same or if it's going to change. Well, I just divided by a negative number, therefore I must write, rewrite it as less than. So now I have negative 11 is less than x. But again, I have that other rule. My x is on the other side, it's on the right side. I need to have it on the left side. So if I switch the orientation of x and negative 11, if I put x on the left side and negative 11 on the right side, then I must also switch the orientation of my inequality. So negative 11 is less than x. What that means is that x is greater than negative 11. Again, saying that I'm older than you means that you are younger than me. Okay? If you want to switch the u and the me, then you have to change the inequality sign as well. Let's do some more examples. I encourage you guys to pause this video, try to work these on your own, and then unpause the video, maybe even skipping or fast forwarding, to see if you're correct. So we have negative 9x is greater than or equal to 108. 
So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 9. So did I or did I not activate my rule? Well, I did, right? I just uh, divided by a negative number. Anytime I divide by a negative number, I have to change the orientation of my inequality sign. So now I have 108 divided by negative 9, and the answer is negative 12. And of course, you can always use a calculator. So my final answer is x is less than or equal to negative 12. Let's do another example. Here I have 4x minus 3 is greater than 9. So again, um, for the most part, I can treat this just like an equation. And just like an equation, I am going to draw a line through my inequality sign so I don't get confused or switch up the two sides of the equation. So I'm going to first add 3 to both sides. Okay, so uh, doing this doesn't really activate either one of those rules. So now I have 4x is greater than 12. Okay, then I'm going to divide by 4. I'm dividing by a positive number. So again, I'm fine. I don't activate any of those rules. And uh, my final answer is x is greater than 3. x is on the left-hand side of that inequality sign, so I don't have to do anything. So we have x is greater than 3. Let's do another example. Once again, I am going to draw that vertical line through my inequality sign. Uh, what that is going to do is it's going to help me not get confused between the two sides of my inequality. So the first thing I would like to do is distribute this negative 3. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So I have negative 6x plus 9 is greater than negative 5. So far, I haven't activated either of those extra rules. So, just like an equation, I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. Okay, subtracting 9 does not activate either of those rules. They're only activated when we divide or multiply by a negative number. So now I have negative 6x is greater than negative 14. So now I am going to divide by a negative number. So remember, since I divide by this negative number, we have to change the orientation of this inequality sign. So negative 14 over negative 6, um, the negative signs cancel out. We can also reduce it. It becomes positive 7 over 3. And this is my final answer because um, x is already on the left side. Remember, we want fractions, not decimals. Um, if you type 7 thirds in your calculator, you're going to get something that looks like this, 2.33333. Okay, this is not an exact form. We cannot express 7 thirds exactly as a decimal. We want an exact answer, therefore we have to leave it as an improper fraction. And again, you have to reduce it. Let's do a few more examples. So once again, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a line here um, so that I don't lose track of the two sides of my inequality. So again, um, just like an equation, I always like to move my variables first and then move my constants around. So this gives me 4 is less than or equal to 2x plus 14. I subtracted 5x, I didn't divide or multiply by a negative number, I just subtracted something so I don't activate that rule yet. Alright, let's keep going. Um, now let's take, um, let's subtract 14 from both sides. Again, subtracting does not activate that rule. So I have 4 minus 14, that's negative 10. So we have negative 10 is less than or equal to 2x. Now I would like to divide both sides by negative, sorry, by positive 2. Right, and dividing by a positive number does not activate that rule. So I have negative 5 is less than or equal to x. Now I have a problem, right? I need my x to be on the other side, and I need my negative 5 to be on the right side. So remember, when I do this, the inequality sign does, in fact, change. Okay, so I have x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So let's look at this last equation. We have x divided by negative 2 is greater than 3. So x divided by negative 2 is greater than 3. So what do we need to do here? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to multiply both sides by negative 2. So remember, when we multiply both sides by a negative number, that does activate that rule. So that means that the greater than sign is going to become a less than sign. So my final answer is x is less than negative 6. So if you recall, back in number 1, the directions ask us also to graph all of these inequalities and also write them in an interval notation. Now I haven't done that yet, so, and if you are already comfortable and well-versed in that skill, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But I'm going to take some time and graph these inequalities and write them in interval notation. So if you would like more practice on that, please watch this video. 
So we have x is less than or equal to negative 12. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. Okay, I'm going to put negative 12 somewhere on it. Maybe we just stick it in the middle. So less than or equal to, remember that means that we're including this endpoint, and less than means we're going to the left. So then remember, to build our interval notation, we can kind of label this graph. So the left arrow means negative infinity. This uh, dot is at negative 12. So we know that our interval is going from negative infinity to negative 12. Now all we have to do is decide, do we need parentheses, brackets, or some combination of them? Remember, we never, ever, ever put brackets next to the negative infinity. We only put parentheses. Then we know that negative 12 is included in our solution. The included in the solid circle means that it needs a bracket. So this is our answer in interval notation. Let's do number two. So we have x is greater than three. So first I'm going to graph this on a number line. So let's just put three somewhere in the middle. Okay, notice this time we have an open circle because it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So that means that three is excluded from our solution. So that means that we have three here. That's the first thing that we see that's shaded. And then the last thing is this right arrow which represents infinity. So we have an interval from three to infinity. Now we have to decide what symbols, a parentheses or a bracket goes um, next to each thing. Three is excluded. That open circle means it's a parentheses. And again, we always put parentheses next to the infinity sign. So that is our interval notation. Let's do number three. So we have x is less than 7 thirds. So I'm just going to put a tick mark kind of in the middle and write in 7 thirds. So this is strictly less than, which means that I am excluding this point. So it should have an open circle. Okay. Then we are going to the left, so that means we shade this way and color in that arrow. Okay, so now we have negative infinity to 7 thirds. So now we just have to decide what uh, should go next to each of these uh, values. So negative infinity, again, always gets a parenthesis. Don't have to think about it, just put that there. Okay, 7 thirds is uh, it's less than 7 thirds. 7 thirds is being excluded from our solution. So our final interval notation is parentheses negative infinity, parentheses 7 thirds, parentheses. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It's parentheses negative infinity, comma, 7 thirds, parentheses. All right, number four, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So again, I'm going to stick negative 5 in the middle of a number line here. Okay, greater than or equal to means that I'm including negative 5. And the greater than part tells me that I'm going to the right. So I have a negative 5 and then I have a positive infinity. Um, because I'm including the negative 5 in my solution, it gets a bracket next to it. And again, you always put parentheses next to the infinity sign. You don't have to think about it. All right, last but not least, we have x is less than negative 6. Okay. So again, I'm going to draw a number line. I'm going to put negative 6 somewhere in the middle. Okay, uh, Less than, not less than or equal to, tells me that negative 6 is not included in my solution. The less than tells me that I'm going to the left. So we have negative infinity, and we have a negative 6. Um, so then we just have to decide what are we going to put next to each thing. So we always put parentheses next to the negative infinity. We don't have to think about it. We separate these two values with a comma. And negative 6, because it's an open circle, gets a parentheses. So that's it.